and cleanse us totally from every form of unrighteousness in Jesus' name. We pray today that in your infinite mercies, you will grace us with your power to continue to live above temptation to sin in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this that you have done, that you take all the glory in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we come before you thanking you for how you have led us since the beginning of this month. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather together in your presence this Sunday morning. We thank you for joining mercies that we have enjoyed. We thank you, Father, for good health and sound mind. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. We thank you for all the provisions you have made available unto us, especially this past week. We thank you for joining mercies. We thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for favor before you and before men. Father, take all the glory this day in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we now come before you today, even as we are gathered together in your presence, that, Father, you will touch our lives in Jesus' name, that through the ministration of your word, Father, you will do wonders in our midst to your glory in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for this that you have done for us. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. We commit all the segments of this service into your care, Father, that you will use them even to bless our lives in Jesus' name. Your Son, whom you have prepared to use, Amongst us, I pray, Father, that you go ahead and use him to your glory in Jesus' name. Speak through him, empower him, and confirm your words, even with signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for this that you have done. That it take all the glory in Jesus' name. For all the brethren who are on their way coming here, we pray that you bring them here safely in Jesus' name. We also ask of you today that even as many of our brethren that have gone to Ojaodo and even to Shimawa, you grant unto them joining mercies in Jesus' name. Make those services over there even joyful to your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for this that you have done for us, that it take all the glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we but it us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We worship King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I charge you to submit yourselves to the King of Kings this morning as you take your worship to him, as you bless him with the fruit of your lips. The Bible says, God inhabits the praises of his people. That is, he lives within the praise of his people and therein wonders and miracles happen because God will bring his presence, will come with his power into our midst. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to just appreciate him and worship him? Here I pray. We are your children and we've gathered here today. We've gathered here to pray. Hear our cry, oh Lord, we need your mercy and we need your grace today. Hear us as we pray, oh our Father, who art in heaven. See 
in Jesus' name we have worship. Church, you're welcome to another refreshing moment in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you be richly blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Prayer points for this week are thank God for his amazing grace. Pray for all sites in our church. Pray for all sites presidents. Pray for divine favor and pray for our church pastor family. Our church pastor, as part of his annual vacation, our church pastor, Reverend Dr. Olushalaido, will be worshiping with one of our churches today at Divine Joy Baptist Church, Shibawa. Our midweek service holds on Wednesday from 6.45 p.m. to 8 p.m. after the meetings of EWMS and MMU. This week, we shall be considering the theme, The Holy Spirit Leads Us. Our test, Romans 8, 13 to 17. Next Sunday, we'll go along to our representatives at Divine Glory Baptist Church, Imota. For those who would like to participate in the 2023 Couples Retreat, here are the account details. Good news. We can only manifest his glory the more in the spirit of oneness to give our tithes and other givings through electronic transfer and or issuance of check. Here is our church account details. Watch or listen to our current sermons on YouTube. Visit our website at www.youtube.com and search for TADMBC. We also encourage us to like and comment on our Facebook postings. Be actively involved, every member a minister. First Peter 2 9. Each one, which one? Matthew 28 19 to 20. May the Lord perfect everything concerning you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are all welcome to this Sunday morning service, this work Sunday morning. And I pray that we shall all Peter be richly tonight. blessed in the name. Which one? Which one? Matthew 28, 19 to 20. May the Lord perfect everything concerning you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We, we have names of member, our members who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Let us put a, a call across to them and congratulate them and also pray along with them. And we pray that all our members will celebrate many more glorious years in the land of the living in Jesus' name. Our coming events are also listed in our bulletin. Let us take note and also plan to be in attendance. We have this letter of thanksgiving from the family of Jayola. The family is thanking God for his goodness at all times. They are also thanking God for divine protection for Tunde on a journey that took three days instead of a day from Abuja. We really thank God for this. The family is also thanking God for divine intervention in the mysterious recovery of an important document. We are, they are praying, and we are also praying along with them that God's grace will continue to speak for us all in the name of Jesus. So let's have a praise chorus to thank God for this great testimony. The owner of my soul, Alpha Omega. Let us be seated while the testifiers remain standing as we pray together. 
Our Heavenly Father, we really want to thank you this morning because you are the only one that is worthy of our praise. Father, we say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. For this great deed that you have done in the family of Jayola, we really appreciate you. We really thank you. This is a testimony that you are our God who answer prayers. Father, thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we thank you for being good to this family at all times. Father, may your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your protection over your son. We embarked on a journey that was even, he was even to come back in a day, but he spent three days. Father, we thank you for protecting him. We thank you, Lord, for being with him. We appreciate you, our Father and our God, for be, even building a hedge of fire around your son. Father, we say thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the mysterious recovery of an important document. It can only be you. Father, we return all glory, honor, and adoration unto your name in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We honor you for this great testimony. Father, accept our heart of thanksgiving this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we pray that your grace will continue to speak for all of us in the name of Jesus. For this testimony that you have brought away this morning, O Lord, and even others, Father, we say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that testimonies will always fill this sanctuary in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we pray that every day of our lives, O Lord, that we continue to be your living testimony in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our everlasting Father, for answering us, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Do we have anyone worshipping with us for the first time? If today is your first time in this sanctuary of peace and love, we would like to welcome you into our midst. If you are worshipping with us for the first time, we would like you to raise up, just signify by our brother, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Before the end of, of the service, the ushers will give you a form that you fill, and before the end of the service, we we'll pray for you. You are welcome indeed in Jesus' name. So let us welcome him and welcome ourselves into the presence of God. We are family, we are from the same father, irrespective of our faces, tribe, and nationality. We came from the same one God. On that note, I want us to pray together from our prayer for this week, which says, May the Lord perfect everything concerning you and I in Jesus' name. I encourage you also to turn our Bible to Psalm 138 as we pray together this morning. Psalm 138, verse 8. Psalm 138, you can make it bolder, Nidia. Okay, it says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hand. I want us to personalize that prayer that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. And by the reason of his mercy, that we find expression in your life and in my life in the name of Jesus. Like the pastor said last, we said we are in the evening of the year 2022, the last quarter of the year. In other words, all expectations are yet to come to pass. God is still in the business of bringing them to reality. We have just had a testimony how a document was recovered mysteriously. We don't know how long they have been looking for that document, but by the power of the Most High, that document was found. Let's raise our hands to heaven this morning and say, God, thank you because you are still at work. 
you are still at work. He that worked in first quarter of the year is still at work now. He worked in second quarter of the year, he's still at work. He worked in third quarter of the year, he's still at work. And here we are in the last quarter of the year. Let's celebrate this goal. That Father, we thank you because you are still at work. He has not gone to rest and he will not go to rest. He has not, he has not retired. He will not, he will not retire. Let's celebrate this goal. Father, we said thank you this morning because you are still at work in our lives. You are still at work in our family. You are still at work in this church, even this nation. Irrespective of all that is happening, we know and we know assuredly that our God is still at work. Let's worship this God because he's still at work. He's still doing wonders. He's still doing wonders. Let's celebrate him. Remember those wonders that he brought, that he brought your way in January. Remember those blessings that God gave you in February. Remember how good he was to you in the month of March. Thank him for what he did for you April, May, June. Celebrate this God. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. He deserves all praises. He deserves all honor. He deserves all adoration. Remember all that he did for you in July, August, September. Let's celebrate this good God. Remember the deliverance he gave you. Remember the provision. Remember the way he made way for you. When hope was lost, God became your hope. He came to your head. Can you remember those good deeds of God in your life? Can you remember those deliverance? Can you remember those provision? Can you remember those answered prayers? Celebrate this God this morning. Let's celebrate this God this morning. Let's magnify this God this morning. He is good. That scripture says, His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. Let's worship this God this morning. Let's magnify Him. He's a faithful God. Let's thank God for this church. It's because we have a church that, that we come together day by day to worship. Because he's, he's here in our midst, let's celebrate God for his doing in this assembly. Let's celebrate this God for his miraculous deeds in this sanctuary. Let's celebrate God in the life of our Father in the Lord, whom God has been using over, over time to lead us, to, to, to connect us with this great God. Let's appreciate God for his ministry among us. Let's celebrate God. Let's worship him. Father, we thank you for our under-shepherd. Thank you for divine leadership. We are granting him day by day. We are grateful unto you, Almighty God. Celebrate this God. Magnify this God. Magnify him. Thank God. Thank him. Just remember those good deeds he has done for you. Irrespective of how small they might look in your presence, celebrate him. It can only be God. It can only be God. Father, we bless your name this morning. We appreciate you, King of glory. I want us to pray this morning that God in his mercy, we have mercy upon us. All we have not done well in our thoughts, in our speech, in the words of our mouth, that the Lord will have mercy. Let's talk to God this morning, that God of heaven, he will have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. That our coming for him today will not be in vain, will not go empty-handed, that the Lord will forgive us. The precious blood of Jesus will sanctify us. He will qualify us to stand before him. The precious blood of his son will qualify us to receive from him. Let's pray this morning that the Lord will be merciful unto us in the name of Jesus. Ask God that as a family, he will show you mercy. As a church, he will show us mercy. As a nation, he will show us mercy. Let's pray this morning that the mercy of God we find expression in our lives. His mercy we find expression in our homes. His mercy we find expression continually in this sanctuary. And his mercy we find expression in our nation. We need God's mercy as a people. We need God's mercy as a nation. We need God's mercy as individual. Let's add that the mercy of God we find expression. He will forgive us all our shortcomings. He will forgive us all our errors of omission and commission. Let's take God those wrongdoings. Let's confess those wrongdoings. He knows about them already. But he wants to hear from your mouth. He wants you to tell him. He knows about them. He's not ignorant of all of those shortcomings. But say it to him with the whole mouth. And resolve not to go in that direction again. And resolve not to go in that direction again. Ask for his mercy. Ask for his mercy. I want us to pray this morning. According to Psalm 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concern me. Pray this morning that, oh God, by the reason of your mercy, perfect all that concerns me perfect all that concerns my family perfect all that concerns my home perfect all that concerns me let's open our mouth this morning and talk to god of perfection he's able to do that which you are trusting him for he's able to do it bible says he's able to do far beyond what we can think or what we can ask according to his power that is at work in our lives open your mouth this morning and say lord perfect that which concerns me you can mention those things to god those things you are trusting god for perfection tell him one after the other this this and that mention it to him 
God is among us this morning. Pray to him. Those things you are trusting him for, special project, special assignment, special task, one, one, one thing or the other that you desire is touch. Why not pray this morning that Lord, perfect this thing concerning me. Perfect this concerning my children. Perfect this concerning my wife. Perfect this concerning my career. Or you have a special project that, 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 that's not moving, that's not working. This is the time to talk to God, that the Lord will touch that thing. Whatever God touches, you can be sure. It, such a thing will come to life. Pray this morning, oh Lord, perfect all that concerns me. Perfect all that concerns me. Is it your health? Tell him to, to him. Is it your health? That the Lord will touch your health. That the Lord will perfect your health. Whatever it is, let's use this moment to talk to our Father, to talk to, to our loving God, that the Lord of all perfection, he will perfect all that concerns us. When we say, I will perfect all that concerns you. In other words, there is no exception. Pray this morning that God of all glory will perfect all that concerns you in the name of Jesus. Let's remember our Father and the Lord this morning that the Lord will perfect all that concerns him as well. Let's pray for our Father and the Lord. Let's pray for our, our pastor that all that concerns him, his household, his ministry, the Lord of perfection, will bring them to perfection. Let's pray for him in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our shepherd this morning that all that concerns him, you will bring to perfection. All that concerns his ministry, you bring to perfection all that concerns his household father in heaven you bring to perfection in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray our father who art in heaven we give you praise this morning we appreciate you because you are a great god we bless you because you are in our midst bible say where two or three are gathered in your name there you are we acknowledge your presence among us this morning be exalted lord in the name of jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all your doings among us since the year began. We appreciate you for what you are doing at the moment. Thank you for much more you will do before the year 2022 we come to an end. We celebrate your faithfulness. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your loving kindness. We celebrate your mercy in our lives. We celebrate all that you have done for us. Be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, our God, we come as a people this morning. Is our yearning. It's our aspiration, it's our expectation that you, God, we perfect all that concerns each of us in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, in line with your word, that by the reason of your mercy, everything that concerns individual, everything that concerns every family here this morning, shall be brought to perfection in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, physically, spiritually, we receive perfection from you, God, in the name of Jesus. In our businesses and career, we receive perfection from you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Concerning our children, we receive perfection in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. I pray, Father, that your hand of perfection will touch every project individual has in the name of Jesus. All our area of concern will receive your touch of perfection in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. As many with us this morning or join us online that are having one challenge or the other with their health, I pray, Father, that your hands of perfection will touch such body system in the name of Jesus, that the power in the blood of Jesus will flow to such individual and such health will receive perfection in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. We pray for our Father and the Lord this morning that your mercy will continue to be at work in his life in the name of Jesus. Perfect all that concerns him perfect all that concerns his household perfect all that concerns his ministry among us and even beyond here in the name of jesus thank you almighty father we lift all our society president before you this morning we pray father going to grant them divine leadership in the name of jesus we pray for all our society president that your grace and mercy we continue to be at work in their lives in the name of jesus thank you almighty father we pray father that all our society continue to work in tandem with your will in the name of Jesus. All our society, we continue to work in the will of God, in the counsel of your God, for the advancement of this church in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. I pray, Father, that divine favor will locate each of us in the name of Jesus. The divine favor will be at work in our lives, in our homes, in all that concerns each of us in the name of Jesus. As a church, we're going to enjoy divine favor. Thank you, Almighty Father. Blessed be your name. One more time, we pray this morning that God of perfection, you perfect all that concerns us and our household in the name of Jesus. 
in this worship you'll be glorified in this worship you'll be exalted i pray father that every blessing you have for each of us will not pass us by thank you lord god almighty in jesus name we pray Let's celebrate the grace of God in their lives. Amen. We thank God for this moment. And like we have heard in the announcement, our Father in the Lord is on his annual vacation. And this morning, he and other 
uh, members of his family and some members of the church will be worshiping at uh, Divine Joy Baptist Church, Shimawa, as they will be dedicating the pastorium that was shown to us last week. We pray that the grace of God will continue to be at work in their lives in Jesus' name. Thanking God for the grace to stand before us this morning to bring the word of life to us. Such a grace is not taken for granted. And we pray that as we gather this morning, the blessings of God will find expression in our lives in Jesus' name. Shall we rise up as we read from the scripture this morning? John chapter 17, we'll be reading from verse 20 to 26. John chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. I read. I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you have loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and this I have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love which you have loved me may be in me and high, may be in them and high in them. Let's go back to verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. Let's be seated as we pray together. Mighty God, Father, we thank you this morning. We appreciate for this moment to share from your word. I pray, Lord, that the breath of life will come upon your word like never before in the name of Jesus. I submit myself as an instrument to you, Father that you will use me and your name alone will be glorified. Both the speaker and the hearer, I pray, Lord, you will bless us. That word which you have for us as individual, we will drop in our hearts. And at the end of it all, only you will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Since the year began, we have been talking about divine glory. And several salmon have come to us on that team of divine glory through our Father in the Lord. And like we have been told, the glory of God is his power. The glory of God is his presence. The glory of God is his beauty. The glory of God is God's honor. And above all, this glory that we are talking about find full expression in Christ. As we have it in John chapter 1 verse 14. We say we behead his glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. So the ultimate glory finds expression in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And just last week, we were told and challenged that we need to manifest God's glory in our relationship. Those of us who are in church or we listen to it online, we are reminded that we need to manifest His glory in four dimensions or four levels. And if you remember that Psalm 2, we are told that we are carrier of his glory. And because we are carrier of his glory, we are not expected to hold his glory. We are not expected to keep the glory in our pocket. This glory needs to reflect in our relationship. And we remember as well that you and I are relational beings. God created us for relationship. No one can survive in isolation. Remember the year of COVID, how terrible it was for us because we are not related with one another. We are at home. Yes, we had food. Yes, we, we, we were connected to TV, we were connected to uh, phones, but it was not a, as beautiful as it would have been if we see one another. And that tells us that human beings, we are created for relationship. Human beings, we are re relational beings. God expects that we relate with one another. God expects that we relate with one another. Father relates with, with, with the children. Husband relates with the wife. And not, not only that, even among friends and family, and that was why last week we were told that this glory needs to be manifested in our relationship. 
on the, uh, at the level of the family. This glory needs to be made manifest at the level of fellowship. This is a fellowship that we are, we, we are doing this morning. Here is a big church here. Sometimes our fellowship is extended to our society. Our fellowship is extended to the department, one department or the other that we belong. At the same time, our fellowship is extended to different units we belong. This glory needs to be made manifest in each of this fellowship that we belong. Not only that we are told, we need to manifest this glory among friends. And not only that, the pastor reminded us that even among foes, those that we consider enemy, there's a way this glory can be made manifest among them. And when they see all of this, it will be said of them, or it will be said of us, this is a child of God. You remember in that summer of last week, when they pierced the, 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 uh, the side of Jesus, that centurion, nobody told him, but I believe strongly he saw something. He said, this is the son of God, an unbeliever, a soldier who was at work. His work was to pierce the, the side of Jesus, but he saw something dramatic. He saw something great, and he remarked, this is the son of God. So this glory is made is expected to be made manifest at these four levels. So this morning, as God will be helping us, still from the same scripture, we'll be talking about manifesting his glory through unity. Manifesting his glory through unity. People of God, as I reflect on this, I discover that unity is very important. Even those levels that we talked about last week at the level of the family friends and fellowship we cannot underemphasize uh, the, 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 the import of unity but i want to quickly draw attention to the fact that sometimes unity can be negative as good as unity could be as good as unity can, could be sometimes unity can be negative i tried to search the scripture and i'm able to give get three examples and i believe there are many more that you and I can think of. The first one that came to my mind in the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. Remember that story? The Bible recorded that people gathered themselves together. You can give us that scripture, Genesis, chapter 11, verse 5 and 6. They gathered themselves together. They began to build a tower. And the mandate of God, as far as Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, 27, is concerned, said, men should grow, multiply, and spread, and occupy the entire universe. But this set of persons gathered together. They united. They, they had one purpose. They had an agreement to be the tower that would reach to heaven. It was a unity. Give us that scripture. And God himself made a remark. Give us verse 5 and 6. He remarked. And Jehovah came down to see. Give, go back to verse 5. Go back to verse 5. And Jehovah came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. Verse 6. And God said, Behold, they are one people, unity. They have one language, unity. And this is what they begin to do. And nothing will be withholding from them what they propose to do. And that's what we say, nothing will be impossible for them because they are united. Nothing will become unachievable for them because they are united. They will be able to achieve all they have in mind to achieve basically because they are united but mind you in this setting they were working against the purpose and the intent of god their unity was against the will of god it's a negative unity and you know the concluding part of that story god came down he confused their language he scattered them because god expected that man would cover the entire universe but these people came together to unite against the will of god this is an example of negative unity, which you and I must not be found therein. Another example that came to my mind is found in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. Ananias and Sapphira, they were united, a great couple. Great couple. They were united. They had one heart. They had one voice. But people of God, it is negative. Their unity, like I targeted, it was a unity of lies. They decided to lie. They decided to showcase deceit. They decided to showcase hypocrisy. But the truth of the matter is that they were united. But it was a negative unit. Let's read that scripture quickly. Give us Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. But a man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a piece of property. What an agreement. They agreed. They sold a piece of property. 
However, he kept back part of the proceed with his wife's knowledge, what a unity, but a negative unity, and brought a portion of it and laid it at the apostles' feet, verse 3. Then Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? Both of them decided to lie. They united to lie to the Holy Spirit and kept back part of the proceed of the field. Next verse. Wasn't it yours while you possess it? And after it was sold, wasn't it at your disposal? Why is it that you plant this thing in your heart? No, not only that you plant it in his heart, you planned with his wife. He agreed with, it, with his wife. And you have not lied to men, but to God. Next verse. When he had these words, and then he had dropped dead, and a great fear came on her. What? Next verse. The young man got up, wrapped his body, carried him out, and buried him. Verse 7. There was an interval of about three hours. Then his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Tell me, Peter Haska, did you sell the feed for this price? Yes, he said, for that price. What a unity. Unity to, they were united to lie. Then Peter said, why did you agree to test the Spirit of God? Why did you unite with your husband to test the Spirit of God? Why did you agree with your husband? Look, the feet of those who bury your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. You know the rest of the story. Both of them united to lie. It's a form of unity, but it's a negative one. Like that we read in that scripture, even after selling the land, they could have agreed that they are, we are not taking the whole money to the apostles. We are going to take this. And we tell them, that, okay, we sold it for this amount of money, but this is what we are parting with. But they presented parts as if it was whole. Negative unity. And finally, the one I, I, I came across as I prepared, Acts chapter 23, verses 12 to 13. Acts 23. And when it was day, the Jews formed conspiracy and bound themselves under a curse, neither to eat or to drink, until they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 who formed this plot. Imagine. People united to kill somebody. People agreed to kill somebody. What has he done? Because he's proclaiming the message of Jesus. Give us verse 12 and 13. Give us verse 12 and 13. In that verse 12 and 13, not only did they agree, they said they would not eat. Just imagine, people were fasting for, for negative cause. They were fasting. They said, we will not eat or drink until Paul had been killed. What a unity. How I wish they channeled that fasting and prayer towards the right cause. But they were fasting and praying. They said they would not eat, they would not drink, until Paul had been killed. They united to murder someone. They united to kill someone. How many times are we too united with the words of our mouth to run people down? It's true, we have not carried knife in our hands. We have not carried dagger in our hands. But with the words of our mouth, we have run many destinies down. Just unite. We agree together that we are going to finish him. We are going to finish her. These people agreed. But glory to God, who did not deliver Paul? into their hands. So as we talk about manifesting his glory through unity, we are talking about godly unity. The unity that, that indeed will showcase the glory of God. The unity that will show that indeed you and I are children of God. We are not talking about unity that will bring people down. We are not talking about unity that will bring institutions down. We are not talking about unity that will bring family down. People of God, I said every unity against the will of God is evil. Every unity which is against the will of God is evil, and such unity must be avoided. And like we saw in that scripture, people can unite to do all kinds of evil. So, people of God, you and I, we are not called to negative unity, but we are called to godly unity in which the glory of our Father will be made manifest. That men and women that see us will say, He is a child of God. She is a child of God. So I look at this uh, someone from these three levels that we need to manifest his glory in our homes. That's the first one. That we need to manifest this glory in our, in our home. I'll go back to that scripture, Genesis, um, John chapter 17, 
verse 22. Say, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. God expects that this unity we are talking about, we find expression in our home. And as we manif- this glory needs to be manifested through the avenue of unity. As fathers and mothers, we have one voice. Fathers and mothers, we have one heart. Father and mother, we are on the same page. Father and mother, we do things in common to the glory of God. Let's not be like Ananias and Sapphira. Their unity was negative. Their unity was a unity of lies. Their unity was a unity of hypocrisy. But God expects that as fathers and mothers, we come together in one heart. We are, we are united in one in purpose. We are united in our, in our action. But all of this must be in tandem with the will of God. People of God, like we have in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, said, give no space to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. And that scripture will say, do not give opportunity to the devil. When we are not united, like I wrote here, I said, a family that is not united is a fertile ground for the devil. When I and my wife are not on the same page, it is easy for the enemy to penetrate. That is a saying that a lizard cannot have a place until there is a crack in the wall. So, daddy and mommy, let's manifest this glory as we are united in our homes. Many homes are broken because the devil has been given a chance. A woman sat before me in the office. I did not ask her a question. She wanted to bring her son for admission. I saw the name of the boy. So I tried to address her with that name. I said, no. That that's his father's name, not her own name. So that tells me that she, she and the father have gone their different ways. I don't know what caused that. So homes have been broken. So when we are not united, it's a fertile ground for the devil to operate in our homes. So I encourage us this morning, as fathers and mothers, let's be united. When we are united, the glory of God is made manifest through unity. God is not the author of confusion. God desire that every family remain one. He said, I and my father, we are one. John 10, verse 30. I and my father, we are one. God expects that father and mother will be one. Say, and the two will come together and they will be one. So, people of God, as we go in the last quarter of the year, as we talk about manifesting God's glory through our relationship, let's strive to be united. And not only that, I've discovered too that many a times fathers and mothers we are not united in disciplining our children. And as such, the children have a hiding place. I remember two, 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 two mothers that sat before me at different times. The woman said, Is their dad? When I would tell them, Don't go downstairs to play, he will allow them to go downstairs to play. Now, see what this boy is doing. If you remember on Father's Day, I said, The boy told the teacher, What is wrong with this mad woman? A GS1 boy. So when I invited the mother, the mother said, I don't know where he learned this. I don't allow them to go and play, but their father will always allow them to go and play downstairs. He was, she, was, she was shifting the blame to the father. I remember another woman who said, see, the way this boy is behaving is his father. When I try to do this, the father will buy this and this for them. They are not united in disciplining children. We are in the same shoe. I'm only privileged to be here. I have children too. So let's train our children with one voice. Let's be united in disciplining our children. So that the children will not be hiding place. Okay, I don't like daddy. I like mommy because mommy will not beat me. I, don't, I, I, I like mommy. I don't like daddy. Let's manifest this unity even as we train our children. Let's manifest this unity as we discipline our children so that we have no hiding place in the home. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And I want to remark again, stay on home. Let our case not be like the case of Isaac and Rebecca. They divided their family. Remember that story? Isaac loved Esau because he brings meat for him. Rebecca loved Jacob because Jacob was always helpful in the kitchen. They divided their home. Let's not divide our homes. 
the greater sibling rivalry in that family. I remember that story very well. I, uh, Esau vowed that he was going to kill Jacob. Because at two different times, Jacob cheated him. But all of these were equally fueled by their family because unity was not in that home. So people of God, we are, we are expected as we go in the year of divine glory, which is end, which we come to our hand in the next two and a half months or thereabout. We are expected to manifest his glory through unity. Let's be united in our homes. And as such, there will be no space for the devil in our homes. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Not only manifesting his glory through unity in our homes, this glory too, this unity too, must find expression in marketplace. As we are united in our homes, we need to manifest this unity in the marketplace. Each of us belongs to one marketplace or the other. That place where you are working is your marketplace. That office that you belong is your marketplace. My school is my marketplace. That trade of yours is the marketplace. That vocation in your hand is the marketplace. If there is any cheap title, title we need to have, we must not have the cheap title, title of Madaru. Some people are expert in causing confusion. As I put this two together, I remember that uh, song of Obey. Yatoin, at Baba Toin. Madaru Malo, Madaru Malo. Ijama Titou. Let's not be agent of confusion. Let's not be agent of, of, of discord in our marketplaces. You know, when you and I do wrong, people can easily say, ah, but he call himself a child of God. But when another person does it, they, make, they will keep quiet. And that's why we cannot just undo our identity anyhow. Say, ah, oh, but he call himself a child of God. And that's thing you have done. Somebody else has done it. They kept quiet. Because they know that you are not expected to behave in that manner. They see something different in you. But when you not behave in that way, they get disappointed. So even in the place of God, this unity is expected to be manifested. We are not expected to be people that will cause confusion. We should be a unifying factor in our place of work. When things, people are confused. When there's no headway, people should be able to come to you with one word of encouragement or the other. Things should be resolved through you. You shouldn't be the one that will scatter things the more. I remember a woman in that of Apostle Lydia. The Bible said she was a seller of purple goods. In her own marketplace, she was known. Remember that story when that woman died? The Bible said people began to cry. They sent for Peter. If that woman was not useful, if that woman was an agent of confusion, in our, uh, in our modern days, they would say, Akutukwe. What are you doing? But they sent for Peter, who was far away in Joppa. They sent for Peter. That Peter, please come. And Bible said Peter came, he prayed. This woman came to life. Even before he prayed, they began to show Peter all the clothes she made for them. She was a unifying factor. I believe strongly. She was not an agent of confusion. In a marketplace, she was known for good. So when she died, said, no, it's not time for this woman to go. No, no, we're not allowed to go. They sent for Peter. And he came. Docker uh, uh, was restored. He was restored. So I hope in our place of work, when they hear that you're going on leave, say, ah, thank God. In fact, I wish you would not return from that leaf. Oh, you're going on leave. You are concerned. Ah, Oh God, how are we going to do this now that you are going to, oh, we are going to miss you? Ha! Ah, or when you to say, oh God, we missed you. Or yours is when you come and say, oh, he has come again. So, people of God, God expect that his glory be manifested through unity, even in our marketplace. Students are not left behind in our, in our faculty, in our dep- department. Let's rally around. Let, people, let, let us be a focal point for unity. We are not among those people that cause riots. We are not among people that brings about this unity. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 
Not only that we manifest this, uni this unity in our homes and in marketplace, even in the community of faith. This unity needs to be made manifest. Give us Acts chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. At 1, and they returned to Jerusalem from, Mount, from the mount called Olive Grove, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. Next verse. And when they arrived, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Aphios, Simon the Silot, and Judas, the son of James. Next verse. And they were continually united in prayer, along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. This is a community of faith. That was after Jesus had ascended to heaven. The Bible said they were together, the twelve, with the other women. They were united in prayer. You know, sometimes we pray together, but our hearts are far apart. Sometimes we lift hands up together, but our minds are far apart. This is a community of faith. They were united. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Give us Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Move on. And suddenly, a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the old house where they were staying. Verse 3. And tongues like flame of fire were divided and appeared to them and rested on each of them. This miracle that happened in verse 3 has its premise in verse 1. It said they were together. They were united. That miracle would not have happened if they, had not, if they were not united. That miracle would not have happened if they were not in unity. See how much blessings we miss when we are divided. See how much blessings, see how much opportunity that we lose when we are divided. See how much blessings, privileges, grace that pass us by when we are divided. They were in one accord. And the promise of Jesus came to pass on that day. If they are not united, I tell you the truth, they will tarry for more days. They will tarry for more days. So people of God, in the community of faith, we expect that we showcase this unity. God is not the author of confusion. In our various departments, let's showcase this unity. In our society, let's showcase unity. Let it not be that some people are lifting it up, some people are pulling it down. Each of us seated here this morning belong to one unit or the other. Some of us belong to Hosha. Let's manifest unity in that ocean department. Some of us belong to the choir department. Let's manifest that unity. Some of us in the drama unit, that unity needs to be showcased. In our different department, different society, this unity should be showcased. God is not present where there is confusion. God is not present in a house, in a department, in a church that is divided. God can never be there. And may I remark as well that such places, such community of faith, that unity is, is not present, is a fertile ground for every works of the devil. Different kinds of work of the devil we thrive in a church that is devoid of unity. Different kind of devil's work we thrive in a, in a group, in a society that is devoid of unity. People of God, as we are, as we are encouraged this morning, Let's strive for unity. Let's strive. You and I should be an agent of unity. You and I should not be seen as agent of confusion. You and I should not yield ourselves as instrument in the hand of the devil to cause division. Finally, as I wrap up this morning, where we started the service from this morning, our divine proclamation, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1, to five. Give us Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. What, in this context, our calling is the calling of unity. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Verse 3. Endeavoring, striving to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body, one Spirit. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Let's try 
to keep the bond of unity in our homes. Let's try to keep the bond of unity in our marketplace. Let's try to keep the bond of unity in the community of faith. And great blessings lies where there's unity. We read Psalm 133, we see the ble great blessings that are embedded where people are united. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. I want you to pray this morning that God will help you as he's helping me as well that will be agent of unity. Talk to God this morning that you will be an agent of unity. In your homes, many homes have been divided because there are different voices. The father is saying A, the mother is saying another thing. And as such, children have gone their different ways. Let's pray that God will help us to be an agent of unity. Even among our siblings, ask for the help of God that you will be a unifying factor among your siblings. You'll be a unifying factor in your home. You'll be a unifying factor in your market, in the marketplace. You'll be a unifying factor. Even in the community of faith, you'll be a unifying factor. In that society you belong, you will not be an agent of division. I will not be an agent of division in my society. Let's pray finally this morning that in this church, there will be no room for confusion. Rather, the Spirit of God will continue to unite us together in truth, in holiness, that we will strive to keep the bond of unity. Let's pray this morning that we will strive to keep the bond of unity. That we will strive to keep the bond of unity in the name of Jesus. That in this church, we will strive to keep the bond of unity. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Mighty God, we thank you this morning. It's your desire that we are united as, one, as a people. It is in oneness that your glory can be made manifest the more. It's our prayer that you help us to be united indeed. You help us to, to walk in godly unity in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, in our home, devil, we have no space in the name of Jesus. In this church, devil, we have no space in the name of Jesus. Our lives will not be a fatal ground for the devil. Our home will not be a fatal ground for the devil. Even when we walk, I pray, Father, you will help us to be a unifying factor. Thank you, Almighty Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. It is now time for us to commit ourselves to God through his tithes and our offerings. And as we do so, let us do it cheerfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's be on our feet. As we give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Sorry, some songs are ringing in my mind. I don't know. <laughs> Apologies to some people that will not understand, but just flow with us. Praise the Lord. What up? What up? Monique, Kosaye, Loki, Oa, Yefumi, Loki, Oko, go, Fole, Hemi, Yanu, Loru, Kore, Sokwe, Kosaye, Loki, Oa, Yefumi, Loki. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
pe se ni ma yo o ai ni e lore yesu se ni ma dupe o baba Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for this great opportunity granted unto us, even to bring your tithes and our offerings into your sanctuary this morning. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. We appreciate you, our Father and our God, for granting us this grace, O Lord. Father, we say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that as we go this week, O Lord, we pray that you go with us in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you bless us from above in the name of Jesus. The, the little that we have brought out of the abundance of your blessings, O oh Lord, we pray that you accept us and our offerings in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we sanctify this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for answering us, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. We have an invitation from the Enola Rondas. They are inviting us to the funeral program of their late father. Which will be coming up next month. coming up 18th and 19th of November. It will be placed uh, in Woody or your state. It will be pasted on the notice board. Let's want to remember the family in our prayers as they prepare for this funeral program. Like we have been told, uh, Father in the Lord is on his annual leave. Today is worshiping at Divine Joy Baptist Church uh, Shimawa. I'm very sure by now you'll have gotten there. They will have started their own Sunday school. We pray this moment, this moment of uh, leave will be a refreshing moment for him in Jesus' name. We're happy to have Brother Adeyeye Taiwo Sunday among us. He has come to to worship with us and he has indicated to join the membership of our church as we wrap up the service now we'll pray with him i encourage us to wait for uh, the cd hour which will commence after now I will equally encourage to be part of the midweek service on Wednesday after WMU meeting and MMU meeting. Let's pray together. Our Father, we give you praise this morning. We appreciate you for your loving kindness among us. Thank you for sending your word to us that we need to manifest this glory through being united. It's our prayer that you help us to be agent of unity indeed in the name of Jesus. We pray for our brother who has come to worship with us for the first time, brother Yeye. We pray that the grace of God is going to be at work in your lives in Jesus' name. The Lord will answer your prayers. He will make his face to shine upon you. Thank you, almighty Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we rise up? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. And never a. But you, Lord, are shit for me, my glory, and the one who lift up my head. Amen. May the grace of God the Father, God the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit may He cause us to walk in the path of unity. 
both now and forevermore. Let us sing together a hymn of commitment. Brethren, let us walk together. Good morning once again. Welcome us into the presence of God, even as we go into our CED hour. I like her mommy, Sister Funke Ademisoye, to lead us in the opening prayer.